Whenever working on electrical installations, be it installing new builds or adding new circuits or altering existing circuits, safety and our safety is always important. One of the main things that we need to think about is have we safely isolated the area that we're going to work from all sources of electrical energy. Safe isolation is key to working safely. The first step of safe isolation is obviously making sure that we switch off all the circuits where we could be potentially working. In this instance, we're going to isolate the entire distribution board or consumer unit. Our first step, therefore, is to switch off each of the circuit breakers and the main isolator. We start with the circuit breakers and residual current devices furthest away from the isolator and work our way towards it, unloading the board. Once we have unloaded the board, then it is safe to switch off the main isolator. Switching off on its own is not enough. We need to prove that by operating this switch, we have, in fact, removed all the main supply from our installation. To prove it is dead, therefore, we need to use some more equipment. We need to use a voltage indicator complying with GS38. We need to check that against a proving unit that will give us a known supply. And of course, all our tools, such as screwdrivers, need to be of the insulated type suitable for connecting to live terminals. Before we can use our equipment, we must first of all make sure that one, it is safe to use, and two, it is working correctly. GS38, produced by the Health and Safety Executive, give us, gives us some guidance on the things we need to check. They suggest no more than four millimetres exposed tips on the probes, that they should be fully insulated throughout their length, and that they should have a means of safety cutout, as well as finger barriers on either probe. In addition to this, the leads should not be damaged in any way so that I shouldn't be able to see any live or potentially live conductors. To actually prove the device, we must check it against a known source, in this case, a proving unit. To do this, I'm simply going to connect the device across the proving unit and see the LEDs indicating correct function. The device is indicating to me that it is registering the correct voltage and giving me the correct sound. If I see either the display of voltage or the sound during my testing, I know I am testing on a live terminal. Once we've proved that our voltage indicator is working correctly, the first test is to prove that there is no voltage between line and earth. We take the first probe and connect it to our earth terminal and then we take our second probe and we connect it to the outgoing side or the load side of the main switch on line. We check the display to show no voltage. The second test will be between earth and neutral. So removing the probe from the line terminal on the load side of the isolator, we reconnect it on the neutral terminal on the load side of the isolator. We again check that there is no voltage displayed. The third test now, as we have proved that both live conductors to earth are not showing a voltage, is to remove the probe from the earth connection with the third test between neutral and line on the load side of our main isolator. 
Again, there should be no display of voltage. With no display, we can then remove our probe from the line, remove our probe from the neutral, and proceed to the next stage. Now we have used our tester, we must still confirm that the device is still working correctly and the reason for us not getting a display of voltage is not that the equipment has broken. To do this, we use once again our proving unit and check for a display of voltage against our known supply. Again we had lighting LEDs and the tone which indicates the equipment is still functioning correctly and therefore our board has been safely isolated. Now we have proven that our board is now safely isolated, we need to make it safe by fitting the covers, the locks and the warning signs. Because of the make of lock that we have for this, we need to fit our cover first. Any gaps in the cover must also be filled with the use of blanks. And then finally, the fitting of the safety lock and warning sign. When we fit the sign we must make sure that it can be easily read before any removal of locks.